this way. I didn't realize how many people were here. Are you sure you're in the right place? <laughs> well, first, of course, I want to thank Jim and Lisa for um, doing this issue of the magazine. Uh, I'm touched and, uh, by uh, them and by the contributors. Uh, when we got the issue, uh, we did what Joan and I often do. We sat up and Joan read everything to me. And uh, it was a great experience. great experience. If you know Joan, you know she's got a wonderful reading book. Can you hear me, by the way? A little louder. Yes. Okay. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Roberta and the Broadway Books for hosting this event. Um, it's nice to have bookstores in town that believe in poetry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's really smell of hay. And it makes use of some common sort of ideas. <coughs> Locking the barn door should have been the title of that chapter of our lives. Our, horse, our horses were always running away, leaving us with the dusty smell of hay and regret. We knew we couldn't alter the past, but we kept locking that damn door anyway feeling more foolish each time, straining to hear the hoofbeats in the distance, confusing them with the pulse in our ears, and kicking ourselves for our failures. Still, we kept getting more horses and better locks, but in the night, the wind or something picked the locks, and by morning, the new horses were always gone. <laughs> and this is just one lesson we've never managed to learn. And oh, the sad stories we could tell you of the spilled milk. <laughs> I certainly knew of Vern's work and his reputation and was duly impressed long before I met him. As a major Northwest poet and along with William Stafford, Vern was certainly one of the most important literary figures in Portland. I was daunted by the dynamic appearance of the man, the dark brooding face, the lowered brow like a cumulonimbus cumulo cloud about to hurl forth lightning and thunder. <laughs> An imperious owl-like visage behind the glasses. A serious, straight-ahead, no-nonsense man, a man you wouldn't want to mess with. But when he broke into a smile or laughed, then there was revealed the warmest, kindest, and most generous man you'd ever hoped to meet. Byrne, whom I initially found intimidating, was just the opposite and was extremely approachable. And the more I became acquainted with him, the more I appreciated those qualities. Over the years, we've become, uh, we've gradually become close friends. He's always been a staunch supporter, attending my readings, arranging for readings, when he taught at Lewis and Clark, always ready and willing to write a recommendation for a fellowship or a blurb for a book. I admire his work for the work itself, but also because Vern is my idea of what a poet should be. His art finally showed up in this book in 2006, how we spent our time. And uh, those of you who know this book know that all the titles are ING words, are those wonderful, or at least they have a gerund in them, and disappearing, as I say, is part of this. Um, I framed that broadside. Those of you who have been in my house probably have seen it in the kitchen, on that kind of big wall in the kitchen. There's one of Lawson Inada's poems there, Burns' poem disappearing, and now off to the side one of Tess Gallagher's poems. Um, it's a wonderful poem. I have read it literally hundreds of times. and. It always takes me in. Let me read it for you. Disappearing. Something like snow covers you. Something like white water. Your breath becomes this strangeness. You mix with it like dye. 
Later, someone finds your name on a table at Goodwill. Almost like new, almost a perfect fit. It strikes his fancy, and the price is right. <laughs> he takes it home, and your family greets him warmly, calling him by name, kissing him, saying, oh, how it suits you. <laughs> <laughs> and to be part of this issue of Hubbub is an honor of the first order. I'm really <laughs> pleased to have something in here. This is called In Your Signature Way, and it is for Vern. Your poem, Disappearing, has lived on my kitchen wall enough years to make itself at home. When I spend time inside its lines, I vanish, reappearing as only my name. <coughs> My name become a garment, which someone else finds in a goodwill bin and wears home. All your poems work a magic on me. Each creates an uncharted place that undoes and remakes me, while barely making your own presence known. I leave disappearing and under I leave <laughs> I leave disappearing and under its final line encounter your hand where you signed in ink your distinct signature so small it could almost disappear. Vern's <laughs> 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 poems, uh, so I'll, I'll read a poem. <laughs> Is it great? And the, the, thing, the thing about Vern that always impresses me, he's absolutely indefatigable. He, he's like a workhorse. I mean, it just keeps mm -hmm. coming. It keeps mm -hmm. coming. Interesting stuff. Always mm -hmm. the new stuff is as interesting as the old stuff. No, that's absolutely amazing to me. So here's, here, here's one great poem. What they did. What they decided to do was so hard we marveled at their courage. It was like trying to tie knots with two fingers inside a matchbox, the way surgeons <laughs> practice. Like that, only much harder. It was like those men who pulled trucks with their teeth, <laughs> only harder. <laughs> like towing locomotives with your eyelashes, <laughs> only harder, much harder. It was like putting together a million-piece jigsaw puzzle of one color, <laughs> only harder, harder, oh, much more harder. Like sewing a quilt the size of Montana. Like draining the Pacific with a spoon. Like bringing to life every extinct species. Only harder. It was like making the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. Only harder. It was like curing lepers and raising the dead. It was like finding love and justice in the world. A little like that, only much, much harder. <laughs> Broadway books, support your local independent bookstores. Yes. They are the lifeblood of the community. They are what keep literature and all of us alive. So.